played 125 matches for the Magpies between 1954 and 64, including the 58 and 1961 Grand Finals. He also achieved excellence as an administrator, leading West into a purple patch through the late 70s and early 80s. Carson played two tests against Britain in 1962, and Bill has a place in rugby league folklore for throwing the allegedly forward pass to Ken Irvine to help secure victory in the third test in Sydney. Fiery prop Neville Charlton was affectionately known as Boxhead by supporters, but opposing teams didn't share any affection. The old mate scrum once again with Darcy Lawler going around having a look at Bath on the blind side of the scrum. Hello, there's uh, one of the boys, uh, Charlton, rubbing his eye. And uh, watch this one. Oh, cop that young Harry. As Harry Bath flies out of the pack and the referee apparently didn't see that one coming through there. Anyhow, Holman works the pack. Neville appeared in the 58 Grand Final and Captain West in the 1961 clash again with St George. Considered by many judges to be one of league's finest players never to play for Australia, Neville Charlton played for New South Wales in 1959 and 1961 during his 228 games in first grade, 143 of those for the Magpies. Always composed, John Dorohy played fullback and centre for the Magpies in 99 games from 1974 to 79, earning the nickname Joe Cool. A brilliant attacking player, a strong defender and a prolific goal kicker, Dorohy proved his durability in a career that stretched over nearly 300 matches in Australia and England before he retired in 1989, the incumbent country origin fullback. Joe Cool represented Australia from West in 1978 in tests against New Zealand and would have toured with the Kangaroos except for injury. Tom Terrific, Tom Radonikus. His stats closely resemble those of the team of the century's halfback, Keith Holman. What an embarrassment of riches for West to have. Tommy played 201 games for the Magpies from 1969 to 1979 and was an Australian test stalwart from 72 to 1980 in 20 appearances. Radonikus had the honour of captaining Australia in the deciding third test of the 1973 Kangaroo Tour. He conclusively proved what impact he could have as a bench player in an interstate match at Lang Park, replacing Steve Mortimer in the last 15 minutes with Queensland leading 13 to 3. Tommy started an all-in brawl, set up a try and scored another to relentlessly drive the Blues to victory 14-13. Tommy's never say die value to Western suburbs or any team could never be overstated. Quite a team of 17, the Western Suburbs Team of the Century, with many Magpie stars unlucky to miss out. With a who's who of Australian Rugby League to choose from, Noel Kelly was appointed to captain the Magpies Team of the Century. Now who would want to argue with that? After all, we wouldn't want Kelly to lower the boom. Ah, it was a sight to behold when Kelly lowered the boom. Who to select as coach of this talented squad? The contenders include the immortal Jimmy Craig, who made the West Tigers team of the century. Other coaching nominees, Vic Hay, coach of Australia's history-making Ashes teams of 1950 and 54. Coached the Magpies in 58 and 59, just after Duck Walsh. Noel Kelly as captain coach Western Suburbs. Names such as Ken Carney, Warren Ryan, Laurie Fryer, and our own test men Don Parrish, Keith Holman, and Tommy Radonikus were among the nominees. As were 1948 and 52 premiership coaches Jeff Smith and Tom McMahon. Jack Fitzgerald a 1952 Premiership winger who coached the club to three successive grand finals in the early 60s and in many minds won the 1963 epic against St George. But surrounded by controversy involving referee Darcy Lawler and an alleged wager at City Tats. The nod went to Roy Masters who successfully guided the Magpies out of the Dolphins, winning the 1977 under 23s and the first grade minor Premiership in 1978.
under Roy, West were a serious premiership threat from 1978 to 1981 inclusive. The miracle, you got to the final with a team of very limited ability. Well, it wasn't so much my magic, I'm not, uh, I, I, I must say that it was largely the cooperation of the players that got us there, but it was, uh, it was a year in which uh, very many people didn't expect us to do so well, I think we capitalised on that for quite some time. Manly this afternoon down at Brookvale, is that going to be a continuation of the feud that's been going on since that, that out in Melbourne? No, World War III won't take place in Brookvale today. Mm. Uh, it's experimental game from both camps and uh, I think that you'll find uh, quite a happy, fast-flowing game of football. Roy Masters, an innovator, a tactician and a powerful motivator, had West playing a physical brand of football to packed houses at Lidcombe Oval. The Western Suburbs team of the century would have no difficulty coping with opposition from any era. With its personnel adjusting to the challenges presented in any period of the game, from the unlimited tackle days to the 10 metre rule. Similarly, the Magpie Club has been resilient through all the eras, negotiating the horse and sulky days and the tyranny of distance when players were assembled from the Blue Mountains to Asheville, giving birth to two new clubs, Canterbury in 1935, Canterbury with the aid of the residential rule inherited the nucleus of our 1930 and 34 Premiership teams, along with the legendary coach Jimmy Cray. Western Suburbs, a team and a club who have no problem with the hard yards. As the Magpie Club song says, come along and give a cheer for the greatest football players, the Western Suburbs Rugby League Team of the Century. <laughs> Those black and white young of Western suburbs should forever be proud. Those are the days they made. Number seven. Yep. Oh, Fratton Park. The one thing that stuck with me was that I, I was a Maggie for the full full thing. I never went to another club after I went there. I was from nowhere and I get to play with whoever I like. So that gave me the chance to play for Western Suburbs. And I never regretted it then. But I had a wonderful period of time with Western Suburbs. And even when I was in the show business, traveling around all through Queensland and winter time, soon the first results I ever wanted on a Saturday night was out at St. Joseph's College West in the GPS comp and our West went in the rugby league. suburbs enough for giving me that opportunity when I was a young lad and uh, I'll always be a magpie. Magpies, you're fantastic. I never played with a dud player at West. I remember the best bunch of blokes I ever met. And the day they booted West out, I think they did the same for me. I'm a magpie to the was at the start. And I reckon my family and I are magpies to the finish. <laughs>